Hey, it's April from the Nova Garden, and today is Thursday. It's the day before Harvest Day. This has been a very rainy, cool week. Um, I know tomorrow Harvest Day is going to be very wet and quite interesting because I have not had to do a Harvest Day after a bunch of rain. Luckily, tomorrow is saying it's going to be sunny, so I don't have to harvest in the rain. I'm sure that's going to happen one day, too. So today is all about preparation for tomorrow, and when I was at the farmer's market on Saturday, this uh, vendor came up to me. You notice I love ice packs, and he offered me these ice packs. Um, he gave me a whole box of them, and I want to see if they work better than the other packs that I got. Let me show you them. So these are the other packs that I bought off Amazon, and they work actually very, very well. They stay cold. The only problem I'm having with them is that they're popping, and I don't want that happening because I do lay this on food. So every day before I put food in my cooler, I do inspect them to make sure none of them are busted. We come back to the farmers from the farmer's market, and I pull them out and lay them on the counter and inspect them again before using them. And what I've noticed is, and the cooler's always empty. I get the food out as soon as I get home. Don't think I'm laying these on. But I just they're just popping. And I don't know if it's from staying in the cooler, reusing, or bad product. I'm not, I don't know. But they're busting in, so I want to try something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash these. Because anytime you're dealing with food, you want to make sure stuff is clean. And I'm going to rinse these off, put a towel on the counter, and let them dry. And once they're fully dry, we'll put them in the freezer. All right, so let's get these out to dry. So hopefully in the next couple hours, those will be dry. This is the morning. I don't know if I said that at the beginning of this video. So there's some things I can prepare now and there's other things I want to prepare this afternoon. The next thing I'm gonna do for preparation is I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my eggs in the container and put them in the bag that we're gonna carry into the farmer's market. It gives me an idea how many eggs we have to sell this week. So during the week, I collect my eggs in these. And then um, I don't wash my eggs. I do take them like this. They're very, very clean, actually. We put lots and lots of um, pine down, hoping the eggs is clean. Um, if you don't know a lot about eggs, they have this bloom on them um, that keeps bacteria from getting inside of the egg. So if you wash your eggs, um, it washes that coating off. And um, a couple things happen. If you wash your eggs, they have to be refrigerated. And if you wash your eggs, as the longer they stay in the refrigerator, because they're good for a couple months, just like normal eggs, um, they lose the fresh taste. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of my stickers on here. My mother-in-law helped me make these stickers, and I put these stickers on the front of my egg cartons. It just tells them information about my company and my eggs. On here it says free range, unwashed, and ungraded eggs. And what that means is my chickens free range. We don't keep them in any type of house. They're out eating grass, worms, bugs, garden stuff that we give them. Um, unwashed, we just talked about that. And then ungraded just means that eggs come in different sizes. You'll notice that my eggs range size, and that's because I have different chickens. So, this is what one of my packaged chicken eggs look like. I normally do try to put 
the newer on the bottom, the older on top. These eggs have been gathered in the same week, so honestly, they're fresh. All of them are. So it doesn't matter what order I put them in. So right now I have five dozen eggs in there. I'll collect more eggs today. The chickens have not enjoyed this wet, mushy weather. So they're not laying as good. Um, we're also eating eggs every day. Um, but I'm not worried about that because the whole point of this lifestyle was for us to eat what we want to and sell the extra. So I'm pretty sure I'll at least be able to bring six dozen with me. I do have one customer that I meet um, every Thursday at a local gas station to buy two dozen eggs and she has had chickens in the past so if they're just a tad bit dirty she doesn't mind like they've got mud on them it doesn't bother her but the farmer's market I really try to keep them as clean as possible if they have any mud or anything on them I will not bring them because I don't want to discourage my customers but so far I have not had any issues selling unwashed eggs everyone's intrigued by it um, they love information and I enjoy teaching them about fresh eggs. The other thing I'll tell you if you're watching this video and you're like, man, if I lay eggs on the counter like you do for like three months, how do I know if they're good or not? If you take a glass of water, you drop the egg in the water, it should sink. The fresher it is, it sinks. The less fresher it is, it floats. If it floats, like you drop it and it straight floats, that's a bad egg. If it floats in the down the bottom a little bit, it's still Good. it's just not as fresh as it would have been if it had sunk straight to the bottom but the higher you get to the top the less fresh they are good morning everybody it is now friday harvest day i want to show you another preparation i did last night but i also wanted to get my onion bunches done and i didn't so now we're going to do that today but it is what it is so i put my tables together um, I'll put the fan up. We sleep with it at night, so it's not in here. So I'm gonna go get the fan and we're gonna start harvesting. I've actually already been out here a little bit. I haven't harvested anything yet, but I had my little bit help me. She washed out my buckets and filled them up for me. And then I walked around to do my garden tour because I always do my garden tour video before I start harvesting. I won't take you guys around with all the harvesting because you guys watch it every week. Um, but I'm going to start with kale. Kale didn't move very good last week. So I think I am going to harvest probably like five of the regular kale and maybe two or three of the specialty kale. And while I'm thinking about kale, I meant to look at my refrigerator to see what we have because we've been harvesting. This week was full of rain. I think I said that in the beginning of this video, like we had four days of continuous rain. Um, so everything is soaking wet out there. It's gonna be a very fun day to harvest. This is part of my refrigerator. We put all the extra stuff in here and we eat on it during the week. I'm looking at it and at this point, it's all chicken food. So this will be all taken out. The kids will take it out to the chickens. And then when we get back tomorrow, we'll put what's left over from the farmer's market in here and eat on it during the week. Okay back outside to truly get started harvesting. So looking at that, um, yeah, kale didn't move at all. There was two red Russians in there and like three of the curly, which I'm shocked. Last weekend we did the farmer's market a little different because we didn't have a lot to offer. We didn't do the two for five. We just did straight $3. And I don't know if maybe that made a difference. I think I might harvest the same and then do the two for five and see how it goes. Last week's market, I didn't, I shot a little bit of a video and then never did anything with it more. My sister and my nephew were in town and it kind of got hard to show some of that. But, but last week's market was very much a disappointment. I was very sad. I really didn't even think we were gonna go this week. I even told the farmer's market, I was like, we're not coming next week. I don't have anything to bring. And then as this week went on, I found things and realize I do enough variety. It's also still very much spring crops. And I just noticed with the vendor beside me, people were looking more for the summer stuff. So I just don't know if people were like getting tired of the early spring stuff. We'll see this week when I bring back the two for five. So I'm gonna cut the camera off and do some harvesting and then bring you guys back to watch a little bit more of other things. So now I'm gonna start laying out 
some of the stuff that was harvested outside to dry. And that's why I did this last night because this just helped pro uh, speed up this process. I have in the past waited until the morning and then I would have to do this before I can do the next step. So you guys have watched me do this before. So I'm just gonna make a fast forward version of me placing leaves. do this before this is where I bundle my um, kales and I have in the past bundled like a mixture of the kales that don't sell very well um, so what I'm gonna do and I've been doing this lately is I just break it up into the variety that it is but I do this I just want to dryish the red Russian um, falls apart or will just wilt is what I mean the red Russian is the most delicate of the three when it comes to how long to let it dry out. So I do leave it a little bit more wet than the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that one first. Um, red Russian leaves are really huge and I think red Russian tastes more turnip -y, especially when you cook it. A lot of people don't know this type, uh, so I don't really sell it very well because people don't know what it is. and. Some people are just not into trying new things. So I'm only gonna to put together two bunches. Why are you sad? But if you wanna try something and you are a turnip fan, this is the one for you to try. these are huge leaves it's gorgeous so this is the stage and that's kind of what it looks like that has gained very much a popularity for me is what I call dino kale. It has another fancy name, of course, and I actually have customers coming in and asking for it. So I'm gonna try super hard to make like at least three bundles, but I don't have a lot of plants out there of it. So we'll see.
right, now let's prepare the cooler. I'm gonna go ahead and finish reloading this table and then I'll come and package this. I actually do have a fourth type of kale. This is called Scarlet. It's a variety, it's very, very much like the curled, you have noticed. The blue curled is green and the scarlet is more purple. I think the scarlet tastes very well. I didn't plant a lot of it, but I have noticed that sometimes this farmer's market likes the color red. So we're going to try it. All right, my basket's empty. So I could, you know, start bundling this. However, since I see room on the table, we have so much to dry. So anytime I have room on the table at all, I go outside, I get another basket. The next basket to come in is Swiss chard, so I'm gonna go grab that basket. that red one is. This little bundle is not enough. I cannot believe I'm going back out to pick a few to go with this one because the kale is a hit or miss every weekend. But since I got this, I might as well go ahead and make another bunch. That will make a much better bundle. I had to show you guys this cute little face sleeping. Well, she's awake right now looking at me. But this is her life. She finds a spot and she sleeps all day. This week's vegetable of abundance. Like I told you, we have a lot of cabbage. I'm bringing some more out. The sad thing, guys, this is not all of it. Let's go ahead and count what's on the table. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I would be shocked at how much we'll sell tomorrow. I do plan on running a special on it to try to get it moving, to get it out. Um, I'll talk to my husband, and I know we're selling for $2 each. Um, I have another idea, but I want to bring it up to him first. Look at these pretty bottles of radishes. I love all the different colors. I only had two bundles, but people like radish most of the time. So guys, I've been going at this for a couple hours now. I actually have a headache, which I've taken something for. Um, I can make a couple decisions. I can keep pushing myself and work on the onion batches because of course that needs to be done or I can lay down for about 45 minutes and try to rest my eyes and see if I get this headache to go away 
there's still more harvesting. My husband and my kids are working on that. Um, I've been doing all the inside stuff now that um, everyone's awake. I've gone in and they've gone out. I'm the bundler. I'm the one that prepares that stuff for the farmer's market. My husband, once he gets up, he's out there. He's harvesting. He's soaking. He's comes inside. Um, he feeds us. Um, everyone has a role on harvest day. Even the kids right now, they're taking scraps to the chickens. Um, it's a family ordeal and they're learning and we're learning and just excited for the future. I guess there was some catnip attached to something because this guy has found him his favorite treat. He is going to town on that catnip. Hey guys, it's the next day after the market. The market didn't go as good. Um, last week went really bad. This week was worse. And I guess I shouldn't say really bad. I just felt like we didn't sell much. I think in this area that people are over the greens. So until I can add summer crops such as cucumber squash, zucchini, and potatoes and tomatoes, um, green beans, stuff like that, I think people are starting to look for, then we are not gonna go back to the farmer's market. We're gonna take a little bit of break. This week, I'm gonna focus on getting the garden nice and prepared and, and fixed up because it has weeds, it has, it needs to be mulched and potatoes need to be harvested. And there's just things that need to be done out here that I think I'm gonna focus on this week instead of trying to go to the farmer's market on Saturday. I thank you guys for watching and look forward to sharing our next adventure at the farmer's market with you.